What's up guys, in this video we are going to explore how to factor quadratic trinomials when a is going to be equal to 3. And we're going to do that by working through five different examples showing you the process either by factoring in your head as well as using the box method or AC method. I hope you enjoy. So to do a problem like this ladies and gentlemen, the first thing we always want to do, when I, I told you guys to write this as a product of your factors. We're going to learn how to do this when we have a is other than, greater than 1 or other than a number 1. But the way to kind of simplify this is always look to factor out numbers. Is there a, is there a constant that we can factor out that all these three numbers, that all, remember we can all write this as ax squared plus bx plus c, where a, b, and c are your real numbers. Is there a real number that they all share? Yes, I mean. Three. So what I can do is I can divide everything by three. So really I get p squared, oh that's a plus, right? Plus 3p minus 4. Plus. Now I write this, and can I write this now as a product of two factors? Right? Because you just factor out a 3, it's just a factor of it. So can I write this as a product? Yes. Now to write that as a product of your two factors, remember we can do a times c, which is negative 4, my b is 3. What two, number, what two numbers multiply to give you negative 4, but add to give you 3? And you could say positive 4 and negative 1. Right? So therefore, my factors are p plus 4 times p minus 1. Right? And that's how it's factor correct. So always, ladies and gentlemen, when looking at this, always try to see if your a, b, and c share a common term. So for this one, I want to factor this out. All right? So to factor this out, ladies and gentlemen, we look at this and say, is there anything they have in common? Right? That's our biggest thing. Is there anything they have in common? We look at this and say, no, there's nothing that these things, that these three terms have in common. So automatically, I'm going to go through my, my x, right? And remember, this is ax squared plus bx plus c. Up top, a times c, which is 3 times negative 5, which is a negative 15. Then I go to my b. My b is going to be a positive 14, okay? Now I need to think to myself, what two numbers for tangy? Multiply to give me negative 15, but add to give me positive 14. Yes? You need to go to the restroom? Uh oh, oh, you lost it. Okay, yes. Uh, I was just 15 and negative 1. Very good. Remember, uh, it's always a times c. When we did the other problems, let's say if I did this x squared plus uh, 8x plus 16, right? This x is just going to be 16 over positive 8, right? The reason being is because it's A, B, and C. Your A is 1. What's 1 times 16? 16. That's why I only got the 16 there. But here my A is 3. You got to make sure you multiply. Here, we just didn't really go through it all the time, D, because it was always a 1. So you're always going to get your C anyways. So now I have these two points. So ladies and gentlemen, we can work on the grouping part, or we can work on the area. I'm just going to do the area one again so you guys can see it. So I create a box, and I throw in the areas that we know. We know 3 8 squared, we know negative 5, and now I'm going to include 15 H and negative 1 H versus a negative H. So now what I need to look at is, let's ask Ethan again since he did a good job. Ethan, what two numbers multiply give me 3H squared? Um, 3H on top and H on the side. 3H times H, right? Now, Ethan, looking at it, where should I put that H? Should I put it here or up here? On top. On top. So the 3 would be here? No, it's going to be on top. Okay, so I should put the 3H on top and the H right there. Right. Okay. The reason why I'm assuming H wants, Ethan wants to do that is because h goes into negative h. Does a 3h go into negative h? No. So I use an h, so now I can say h times 3h is 3h squared. h times negative h is a negative 1. 3h times what gives you 15h? Positive 5. And then let's just check our answer. Does 5 times negative 1 give you negative 5? Yes. So my answer are these two binomials. 3h minus 1 times h plus 5. And what's different about that, Jeff, is everybody wants to automatically, they forget. That's why I showed you guys this area. 
It's the area. It's not just what these answers are. Everybody wants to do this. You guys got to understand that that is not the answer. Everybody wants to do that. You got to <laughs> use the box. If you're not understanding the grouping technique, put them in a square and then factor them out to get 3h minus 1 times h plus 5. Okay? Good. So, the main important thing is we have 3x squared minus 16x plus 15 or plus 5. So you did the exact same thing. We understand we can't factor anything else. So to write this as a product of two factors, we're going to use our x, and we just do 3 times 5, which is 15. And then our b, so our a times c, which is ax squared plus bx plus c, our a times c is 3 times 5 is 15, and our b is going to be negative 16. You've got to make sure we bring that negative sign with us. So now I look at what two numbers multiply to give me positive 15 but add to give me a negative 16, and that's why I could see automatically the problem was you yeah. didn't have the negative 15, negative 1. Now, again, the biggest mistake that a lot of students will say is they, you know, just because when A was equal to 1, we would just take our two answers and we say, oh, well, that's that's your answers. But if you were to check, you know, check FOIL or multiply these out. Yeah, you're going to be missing that negative. Or that yeah, three. you notice, yeah, exactly. You're not going to get that 3. And even just throwing a 3 in there is still not going to get your answer because negative 15 times negative 1 still does not give you 5. So it doesn't even matter multiplying that 3 is not going to solve that out. Uh -huh. So what we need to do is we need to write out, what we're going to do is we're going to rewrite out 3x squared minus 15x minus 1x, or just x, plus 5. So all I did is I rewrote this equation out with now these two terms that we used. So mathematically, this is the exact same. Negative 15x minus x is still negative 16x. Yeah. Let's see what it did. But now, being able to do that, what that allows me to do is now I'm going to factor by grouping, which means I'm going to factor the first two terms and factor my last two terms. So now I look at this and I say, all right, what can I factor out? Three. And a 3 and also a an x. x. So when I factor out a 3x, I'm left with an x minus 5. And my whole goal is to get two of these terms together. So since I have a negative x plus 5, I'm going to want to factor out a negative 1 which will leave me now with an x, because right now that's a negative x. You want to make it a positive x. Yeah. So you factor out a negative 1, that leaves you with an x minus 5. And I'm not going to write the negative 1 because we know we can just write that negative sign there. Now we look at it and we say, oh, all right, these two now have an x minus 5 in common. So now you can factor out an x minus 5. And then you'll be left with a 3x. As you remember, there's that minus 1 there. Right in there. Now, if we just kind of double check to make sure, does x times 3x, is that going to give you 3x squared? Yep. Negative 5 times negative 1, give you positive 5. And then if we were to do the inner terms, we would we um, would check that they'd also give us negative 16. So that's pretty much about it. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to factor uh, this polynomial. And you can see this polynomial is a trinomial, right? It has three terms, and it's also a quadratic. Now, I can factor this trinomial, but before I even get into factoring trinomials, I always want to see, is there a way we can simplify this? Basically, is there a factor that we can factor out, You know, hence our GCF? So I look at each of my three terms, and I see, you know, is there anything that they all share? And unfortunately, there are no common terms that I can factor out. So therefore, the next step is to use our factoring technique for when a is greater, when a is not equal to 1. And to do that, we use our AC method here. So I'm going to do a times c, and then I have b. I'm going to multiply and then add. So I'm going to multiply my a times c. 3 times 10 is going to be 30. And then I'm going to list negative 17. Now, to identify my two other um, terms that are going to be a part of my factor, factors, I need, to re I need to identify the factors of 30. And basically what we're trying to identify is identify two factors that multiply to give us 30 but add to give us negative 17. Now forget about the negative just for a second. Let's just write in what are all the factors of 30. And once you get kind of used to this, uh, what you will see is 15, 10, and 3, um, that a lot of these will start coming very easy, easily in your head. I don't know if I said that correctly, easily more easier. No, I'm just going to stop talking. So uh, what you have is a list of factors. And I was able to find four of them that when you multiply, when you get to identify the product is 30. Now, again, remember that they, these have to add up to give us negative 17. So there's no way that our two fa our, both of our factors can be positive. However, if I had both our factors are, were negative and I added them, then that would give me negative 17. 
So that kind of changes the whole ball game. Now, now I make all my factors negative because I know two negative numbers are going to give me a positive. Now I just look at the factors and see, all right, which of these factors add up to give me negative 17? And you can see I have my winner, winner, chicken dinner right there. So now I've identified negative 15 and negative 2. I need to input them back into my polynomial. And one of the methods I'm going to do that is by inputting them in for my middle term. So I'm going to write 3n squared minus 15n minus 2n plus 10. So what I want you guys to see is I just rewrote negative 17, negative 17n as negative 15n minus 2n. And I did that so now I can apply grouping because now I have a polynomial that has four terms. So now I can apply the grouping technique of factoring. So what I do is I group the first two terms and the last two terms. Then I basically look at these and I say, all right, what do these two terms have in common? And you can see that I'm going to be factoring out their GCFs. And you can see that these have in common a 3n. When I divide both these terms by 3n, I'm left with an n minus 5. Then these two terms, um, again, you can see that I can factor out a negative 2. And they're left with an n minus 5. So the whole purpose of factoring by grouping is to obviously get two expressions that are exactly the same. Now, since these are exactly the same, I can factor them out. And what's going to be left over is going to be 3n minus 2. So I'll write that as my other factor. Then, if you want to check your answer, you can always apply FOIL or distributive property to multiply and see if you get 3n minus 17, n plus 10. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you factor for your polynomial. Thanks. OK, I'll do this a second time for you. So, since you guys are all good, I'll just work with you guys. And thinking about uh, what we want to do here, and what we're going to do for this problem is we're, gonna, we're asking you to factor it. So remember, factoring tells us to take a, either a number or, in this term, an expression, and write it as a product of its two factors. And when we think about what are the product of its two factors, a factor is either a number or you know, a term expression that can divide into our original number expression. So, what I'm doing is I need to break this up into two expressions that divide evenly into this. Now, the first one we always want to look for is a numeric expression, like a number, that can easily divide into this. And that would be a factor. So I look at this. Is there any number that can divide into 3, 19, or 20, negative 19 and 20? And the answer is no. So therefore, now what I'm going to have to do, and there's also no variable that divides into there. So now what I'm going to have to do is simply look at a method to write this as a product. And one of these methods I'm going to kind of share with you that we write is we write this big X. And we need to remember that when we have a trinomial in quadratic terms, that means it's in the quadratic form where A is the coefficient of your x squared, B is the coefficient of your linear x, and C is your constant. What we can do is we can help to solve this problem by following these steps. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply a times c, and then I'm going to add for b. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply a times c, which will give me positive 60, and then I'm going to write b, which is negative 19. Now, this is very similar to the problems that we worked on before, uh, but the difference is our a is now greater than 1. And notice, before we always just wrote down c, right? But now, when there's a number in front, I need to make sure I multiply that a times c because uh, when when it was just when there was no number in front, there was one. So one times c always just gave us c. That's why we make sure we multiply that a. So now I need to do is determine what two numbers multiply to give me positive 60, but add to give me a negative 19. Think about this. We know our two numbers that multiply to give us 60 have to be negative because two numbers, two positive numbers, will multiply to give you a positive 60, but they're not going to add to give you a negative number. So when I start thinking about this, two negative numbers that multiply to give me a positive 60, I come up with a negative 15 and a negative 4. Now the quick thing that a lot of students want to say is like our other answers, they'd say, oh, our two factors that are x minus 15 and x minus 4. Boom, I got it, right? Hold up. Um, our problem is if we're going to check our FOIL, one thing we notice is FOIL gave us that first term x times x was supposed to provide us with that first part in our trinomial. Well, x times x here is, does not provide us with 3x squared. Remember, factoring 
is all we're doing is we're taking our original problem and rewriting it as the product of two of its factors. Mathematically, it's still going to have the same value. This expression and that expression do not have the mathematical same value. Negative 15 times negative 4 does not give you 20. So what we need to do is we need to write this in a way that is still going to keep that mathematical, um, still going to keep that mathematical equivalence. So what I'm going to do is I am going to now write 3x squared minus, that's right, that's right over here, 3x, no, over here. 3x squared minus 15x minus 4x plus 20. And actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do a little. Let me use a little with my markers so you guys can see. What I've simply done now is taken my 15 and my 4, they're both negative, and plugged them into the equation. Again, look at this. This is exactly mathematically the same as this. What I did was I broke down my negative 19 into negative 15 minus negative 4, or negative 15x minus negative 4x. How did I know that worked? Because there's a lot of numbers that um, add up to give you negative 19. Well, because those were the two that multiplied to give me a times c. Now what I can do is since I'm still keeping the structure of this, what I'm going to do now is factor it by what we call by grouping. So I can't, again, look at all these, and they all don't share something, so I'm just going to factor the first two terms and this last two terms. So now I need to determine what number goes meaningfully into 3x squared and also goes into a negative 15x squared. Now, if you want to break it down because you're having trouble with the factoring, factor out each one of these in, um, together like we previously did. But what you guys notice is we can, they share a 3x, so that means 3x is one of their factors. So if 3 is one factor, to find the other factor, you take your number, divide it by your factor 3, and you're going to get 2. So 3x squared minus 15x divided by 3x, well, the 3's cancel out, x's cancel out, so I'm just left with x. Negative 15x divided by 3x is going to give me a negative 5. Then I look at the next two terms, negative 4x plus 20. What number evenly divides into negative 4x plus 20? And we could say a negative 4 and or a positive 4. And what we're going to do is a quick little distinction. A lot of students want to write a positive 4. Well, what happens when we write a positive 4, that's going to leave us with a negative x, because negative 4x divided by 4 is a negative x, and 20 divided by positive 4 is a positive 5. Quick little tip for when I explain it, you need these to be exactly the same to finish up our problem. So rather than factoring out a positive 4, let's factor out a negative 4. Negative 4x divided by 4 gives you now a positive x. 20 divided by negative 4 gives me a negative 5. So what was so important about that is now, since I have these two the same, again, we haven't changed anything. All I did was factor out common, ter common factors for these two terms and these two terms. Now what I do is factor out common terms between this term and this term. And what you notice they share is the common term of x minus 5 and x minus 5. So what I'll do is I'll factor now out an x minus 5, and I'm left with a 3x minus 4. And that's how you factor when your trinomial has a number greater than 1.